Welcome to worship here at Burke's online. You know, one of the things that happens when we're recording worship services is that we record at different times during the week. Last week's service was recorded earlier in the week so we could stay out of the rain and, and have the fire for Pentecost. But in the days that followed, we saw some things unfold in our country that were disturbing. And we weren't able to address them in a manner that could be filmed on time. But today is Peace with Justice Sunday. And we will be talking some about how that in relates to what's happening now in our country. We are hurting. People are hurting in ways that I can't even understand. But I can try, I can try to understand, and I can try to give space for those who are struggling to have a voice. And we pray today in worship that that space will be honored. So today, set aside the things that might be distracting you in this space and turn your heart towards God to see what can be revealed in worship. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God all creatures here below. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God the source of all our gifts. Praise Jesus Christ whose power uplifts. Praise the Spirit. Holy Spirit, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God of love and mercy, you have given us stewardship to care for the wonderful planet and to care for our neighbors. We have been blessed with a variety of gifts and talents, and you call us to use them to help others. Open our hearts today to ministries of peace with justice. Embolden us to become part of this great cloud of witnesses who were unafraid to be your disciples. We think of so many in this church and in our lives who have gone before us, braving the difficulties presented by life. We name them in our hearts before you, grateful for their example. We also name in our hearts those people who are ill, who mourn, who feel lost and alone, those who are part of cultures of oppression and indignity. Help us to be those people who, by our example, will break those chains of poverty and burst the doors that imprison their spirits. Be with this church that, in, that it may be a true witness to Jesus Christ in all that we do. Amen. Today's scripture reading comes from the book of Micah, chapter 6, verses 6 through 8. With what shall I come before the Lord and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with a calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, with ten thousand rivers of olive oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? 
to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing that again, here we go. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God, glory hallelujah to our God. Every praise. Every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship in one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory, hallelujah, is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God, my Savior. God, my Savior. God, my healer. God, my deliverer. Yes, He is. Yes, He is. God, every word of worship in one accord, every praise, every praise again, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, oh, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, one more, every praise. Every praise, every praise to our God. Amen. Hey, church family. Um, it's with a really heavy heart that we announce um, that we are going to have to cancel Vacation Bible School this year, um, which is, you know, summer is my favorite part at Berks. Um, but as you know, we usually have over 100 kids and over 100 volunteers um, the week of Vacation Bible School. And so with all the... Um, things that are going on right now, there's just not a safe way to do it. So we are going to have to cancel this year, um, but it is my hope that whenever it is safe for um, children's programming to resume, that we would use um, either our Wednesday night time or our Sunday morning time to do um, our vacation Bible school programming. So it's canceled for the summer, but we're going to do our best to do it sometime in the fall or whenever things get back to normal, um, just on a smaller scale. Welcome to Burke's Kids. Today we are going to be singing the Ten Commandments song. It's time to get up and dance.
God rescued his people out of Egypt Out of Egypt he rescued them He gave them ten commandments to follow So the whole world would know they belonged to him One, love the Lord your God Two, don't worship any other three be careful using my grave name Four, set aside a day for me Five, honor your father and mother Six, don't take another's life away Seven, be faithful to your love Eight, nine, don't steal or lie And ten, don't covet your neighbor's house or wife Or cow or toy or we or when they went to Disney World Three times last year but if you can't recite these off the top of your head Just remember that two greatest commands Jesus said Love God with all your heart Love God with all your soul Love God with all your strength And love your neighbor as yourself Don't worship any other three Be careful using my great name Four, set aside a day for me Five, honor your father and mother Six, don't take another's life away Seven, be faithful to your love Eight, nine, don't steal or lie Ten, don't covet your neighbor's house Or a wife or a cow or a toy or we Or when they went to Disney World a million times last Remember the two greatest commands Jesus said Love God with all your heart Love God with all your soul Love God with all your strength Love your neighbor as yourself of offering, I remind you that there are many different ways that we can be in ministry together. This act of worship is just one of those ways. By giving to this church, you are supporting the ministries of this church. And that puts us in the community in a real way, providing food, meeting the needs of people who are struggling now in this environment. Um, we are giving to this community in different ways than we have before, but we are still striving to meet those needs. And we see need more than ever now. We see need as people are struggling to figure out what it means to be in this world today. What does it mean when we can't have the jobs as normal? What does it mean when we can't gather together? What does it mean when we do gather and it's in protest because something so egregious has happened that we're willing to gather, to speak out, even when that is a dangerous act? When you give here, you are giving to a place that sees that hurt and strives to meet it, strives to meet it in a very real and tangible way. We pray that the gifts that you give here will go to share God's love in a world that certainly needs to see it. A reading from Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. 
Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything he commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. This is one of those days when a preacher stands to speak the word of the gospel, the word of the prophets, and they know that no matter what they say, that somehow somebody's going to hear it wrong. It won't be that I necessarily say the right words because I hope that I will, but it will sometimes be because we just hear them wrong. This week has been a week full of voices for me. Some of you know that my oldest brother, Dell, uh, passed away this past week. He was 18 years older than I am, and yet we were very close, especially when I was in uh, the years right after college. We lived together for a while, and I remember his voice, which told me that, that regardless of what you uh, did in the church, your actions had to match not just your words, but the words of Jesus. In his church, St. Bartholomew, Episcopal Church in Atlanta, he taught me to have a great deal of fun at worship, but also taught me how very serious and important it was. They began a program back then, and this would have been in the early 70s, that is very similar to our Family Promise program. I would remember him coming home from church meetings at night and, and grumbling about how people were more concerned about where their stuff was in their Sunday school room than the fact that they were helping families to be together while they were preparing themselves to find housing and find work and find schools for their children. There were days when his words were very unkind, but it was because his actions were trying to speak even louder than those words. I've also heard the voices of my grandfather and my father. They were men of the farm, and they weren't what you would call articulate or, or very outspoken as far as words were concerned. But they certainly were as far as action was concerned. They worked with people of other races and other economic classes and and they measured people not by what they had or where they were from or what their race was, but they measured them according to the size of their heart. And that's a witness that I always appreciate. We've heard some old voices this last week when we have watched TV or heard the, the news on the radio. Many people have quoted Martin Luther King Jr. in a speech that he made to Stanford University called The Other America, where he said, a riot is the language of the unheard. And he asked the question, and I think we have to ask this question also, what is it we're not hearing today that's causing the things that are happening in our country? It's very disquieting. And so like him, we're going to ask today, what are we not hearing? He also said in that speech that uh, there were many people who were outraged by the actions of the police of his day, like Bull Connor, who were totally outraged by that, but were not all that happy about equal rights for people who were African-American. They were upset because of what they saw on their TV, but they weren't really that upset about how people live their daily life, maybe right around them. 
I know some of you may be old enough to also remember, like I do, that there were places and times where there was a separate bathroom for people who were black. There were separate facilities for them. In my hometown, they had a separate pool because you wouldn't dare go swimming together, and there was a separate school. So many things were separate that we were hardly ever together to learn from each other and about each other. I also hear the voice of the church on this day. The voice of the prophets of the past and the voice of the gospel as we gather together in a place and we have called this Sunday for many years Peace with Justice Sunday. You've heard those words in the last week or so on the television. No justice, no peace. My problem with these phrases is that they can be turned back around the other way and used by the other side. I've heard them chanted by police in a different place and time. No peace, no justice. In other words, get yourself right or nothing good's going to happen to you. But we talk about peace with justice. And I know there are people, there are also voices of people who, who will talk about the fact that social justice is, uh, is something that, that we as the church shouldn't believe in. But I want to remind you that we as United Methodists, we as followers of John and Charles Wesley, have social justice in our very DNA. It's always been part of who we are. We've always thought that it was important not only to talk about helping people not be hungry, but actually feeding them too. And not just feeding them, but helping them to be able to produce food for themselves and, and helping them to get a, a leg up in society. It was the, United, it was the Methodist Episcopal Church that... that help to uh, campaign against child uh, labor laws. Early in the last century. And because we were willing not only to, to say something, but also to do something, we were able to change those laws in a way that, that made our society better all around. Today, we need to realize that the death of George Floyd is only one more death in a long string of death and other injustices in our legal system. There's a movie that's out. It was released in December. And perhaps you saw it then, but if you haven't, it's, uh, it's available on Netflix for free. And I encourage you to watch it. I don't usually give movie recommendations. The name of the movie is called Just Mercy. It's about a guy named Brian Stevenson who graduated from uh, Harvard Law School. And then he moved to, to Alabama, to Montgomery, Alabama, to start an organization called Equal Justice Institute. And the story in the movie is about how he helped a young man named Walter McMillan who was accused and convicted of murder for the killing of a, a young white girl. There was very little, really no legitimate evidence that he had ever had anything to do with this murder and yet he was tried and convicted and put on death row for years. You might remember he got out just a few years ago and it was on the news then. Brian Stevenson was willing to come in and, and not only uh, to say he was against people being brought before the state to be killed when they had no sufficient defense, 
but he was willing to do something about it. And because of his willingness to do something about it, this conviction was overturned along with 125 others. This meant something to me because Mr. Stevenson, who's still alive, was working during the time that my son, Anthony, was the clerk for the, uh, the Alabama Supreme Court Justice. One of his duties as the clerk in that court was to handle death penalty cases. And so it occurred to me as I was watching this, this movie that it was actually possible that my son Anthony and this man, Brian Stevenson, or maybe one of his associates, came into contact at some point in time. And I could tell you about the pure agony in my son's voice on the day that somebody was put to death in the Alabama electric chair. It was someone who, whose case he had seen in whose case he was sure wasn't very good. But because he was black and poor, he didn't have the money for a very good defense. And nobody stood in the gap for him. There are lots of social inequities in our world. And we can pretend that they don't exist, but we know that they do. We can pretend that, that our good words or our good feelings are enough to make them better, but they're really not. For us to help solve the problems of our country takes more than just people shouting at each other. It, it takes more than posting something on Facebook and be careful, folks. Even if you post something with all the best intentions of the world and you think that you've said something a certain way, other people can misunderstand or even choose to misunderstand. And it only leads to more divisiveness. It takes more than holding up a Bible outside a church. It takes people in the church getting out from the church, people who have read the Bible and who know that God's deepest desire is for us to love each other in such a way that we can help each other get stronger and better and live justly together. We cannot say that only time can heal these wounds because that's not really true. Martin Luther King Jr., when he was making his Stanford speech, talked about that time. He said that people were always telling him and other leaders of his time to be nice and polite, and the problem of racial injustice would eventually go away. But he said, social progress does not roll into, does not roll in on wheels of inevitability. That it takes people of action and people of love to work against the, the difficulties of relationships to help bring people together. We not only have to repent, repent for the violent actions like the police officers in Minneapolis this last week, but we have to repent for our appalling silence when we have seen things that were wrong and we chose not to do anything about them. It is always a right time to do the right thing for somebody else. Because each person that you see, and whether they are black or brown, or, or they come from a different society or a religious background, we are all called to be part of God's kingdom. 
the government, the government may not be able to change the hearts of people. I'll say it even stronger, the government can't change the hearts of the people of this world. It is extremely hard to legislate morality. We've tried to do that many times. Even we as the Methodist movement tried that back during the days of prohibition. And it didn't really work. But you have a message. You have a message of hope and of mercy and of unmerited grace that encourages all of God's people to be brothers and sisters together. You've heard that message over and over in the Bible. You've heard that message over and over in your Sunday school classes and in, in your church worship services. You've seen it in the eyes of those that you've sat beside. We need to make sure that our voices are heard in the world today. That it's not just angry voices shouting at each other from opposite sides of the street, but it's found in words of love and care as people walk across the street to help somebody else. May the voices of our faith reach out through time to help us overcome these sins that are in our heart. It's not about individual sin. It's about sin that we do together as a society, as a community. So I'm going to challenge you this very day. I want to challenge you to think about how we as the people of God in Hickson, Tennessee in 2020 can go forth into the world and make a difference in the lives of everybody that we see and that we can bring the love of God to each and every person that we have contact with. I'm going to talk about this some more and, and I hope that you will prayerfully consider how we as the people of God who've been forced out of our building because of a dumb virus that threatens us as a community. How we can stay outside the building long enough to help others learn about the love of Jesus. Amen. We confess this day, O merciful God, that we have not always acted in just ways nor sought justice for our friends and neighbors. We have found it easy to turn our backs on problems rather than seeking to be a solution to them. We have heard of the many ways in which you have demonstrated peace with justice through the ministries of your son, yet we have given only sporadic attention to them. Forgive us, Lord. Heal our selfishness and brokenness. Cause us to be witnesses to your great love as shown to us in Jesus Christ. Amen.
this is the good news. Christ died for us that we might have life. We are called to give our lives to ministries of justice. God is with us in this and all righteous endeavors. Thanks be to God. Amen. Here's some words that you've heard many times from the prophet Amos. Uh, the words come at the end of the fifth chapter, in verse 24. And they're, they're really great words, and, and we love to quote them, and, and we've sung songs to them, and, and we've written them on buildings. But sometimes we don't pay attention to the words right before there. God is telling the people of Amos' time that they, they need to get out and get busy doing something to make a difference in the world. And right before the words we like to quote, it says, take away, from, take away from me the noise of your songs. To the melody of your hearts I will not listen. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever-flowing stream. May that be what we try to do beginning today. And may we go with peace and with justice in our hearts as we attempt these things. Amen.